Update 1.6 has now gone live, and agents are again adjusting to a new meta with sweeping changes to armor, mitigation, damage, and skill power. So before we dive into this assault rifle best in slot optimization guide, I wanted to give you a timestamp for all of the different sections of this resource guide, including best weapon mods, gear optimization guide, best assault rifle talents, and virtually anything else you could want to know about assault rifles in update 1.6. This is going to be quite a long video, so without wasting any more time, let's get started. What's going on, agents? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and as you requested, I'm back with another Best in Slot optimization guide, but this time for the Mighty Assault Rifle. Due to the overwhelming support for my first video in this series, I have taken the time to get this tutorial ready as quickly as I could. By the way, if you are interested in viewing the first video in this series, my SMG optimization guide video, I will leave a link in the description below. The first topic we need to discuss for this assault rifle optimization guide for update 1.6 are the changes to assault rifles moving from 1.5 to 1.6 and you may be surprised, but there were none. At least there were none listed in the patch notes for the high-end weapons. The sneaky devs at Massive did push through a 4% base damage nerf to the M4 category of rifles, including the LVOAC. In addition, there were sweeping changes to the exotic assault rifles, including the MDR and Bullfrog, formerly known as the FAMAS. On the flip side, there have been massive changes to armor and armor mitigation. Since the native assault rifle talent is enemy armor damage, I felt that you should know that base damage on all weapons have been scaled down to compensate for the reduced damage mitigation from the changes to armor. NPCs have also had their health and damage adapted to preserve time to kill and time to be killed values pre-update 1.6. In simple to understand terms, both agents and NPCs have far less armor than in 1.5, making our toughness ratings far more dependent on health and stamina and far less dependent on armor and mitigation. So how does all of this tie into changes to assault rifles? Well, in short answer form, players in update 1.5 that equipped assault rifles usually spec quite heavily into enemy armor damage and armor mitigation built around an alpha bridge uncomplicated gear set. It was clear that something needed to change as the meta had become quite dull as everything was centered around armor. With this in mind, the devs have greatly reduced the armor percentages of players, switched armor attributes from major to minor, and have now put a much heavier emphasis on health and skill power. Now that we've laid some basic groundwork for the underlying changes to the armor mitigation percentages for our current meta, let's jump right into the best weapon modifications for our optimized assault rifle build in update 1.6. First up are the muzzle mods, and there are 13 mods available for customizing your assault rifle. Notice that the loud vent brake, large suppressor, SR7 suppressor, Omega rifle suppressor tan, and Omega rifle suppressor all come in two different variants, with the differences being the primary roll attribute. For the purpose of our build, we can eliminate any muzzle mods with increased or decreased threat mods as their primary roll, as these attributes have no effects on damage, stability, or accuracy. This will leave us with eight mods left to choose from. Critical hit damage is the major attribute on three of these muzzle mods, and I do not want you to think that specking heavily into critical hit chance and damage is necessarily a bad thing for our optimized assault rifle build. However, specking heavily into crit will depend on your playstyle and gear set build. This leaves us with two muzzle mods with stability as their primary attribute role, one mod with accuracy, and two mods with headshot damage. Before we select from these 8 muzzle mods, let's take a look at their percentage rolls in comparison to other sources available from talents or gear pieces to evaluate their efficiency. Critical hit damage rolls from 17 to 20.5% and in comparison to its lower roll counterparts gives you a primary attribute gain of nearly 5 times versus what it rolls for in lower percentages. Besides the gloves, no other gear piece can roll such high percentages of critical hit damage and only the deadly weapon talent can come close to these primary attribute rolls, still coming in short at a 15% critical hit damage gain. Stability rolls anywhere from 11.5% to 14% on the compensator and muzzle brake, and this looks enticing, especially for those of you that struggle to control a high fire rate assault rifle. However, in comparison, the capable weapon talent reduces sway, recoil, and spread by 25% for a period of 15 seconds after using a skill. As an alternative, if a player wants a constant stability bonus, they need only to equip two pieces of Striker's battle gear for a 20% stability bonus. 
Accuracy rolls on the flash hider anywhere from 15 to 18 percent and this can help with tightening the spread or bloom of our bullet patterns when firing full auto. However, the accurate and capable weapon talents offer a 25% increase in accuracy or a 30% gain can be achieved by equipping two pieces of Sentry's Call. Headshot damage can roll from 16 to 18.5% on the Omega Rifle Suppressors and this percentage cannot be surpassed by weapon talents or most gear set bonuses as Brutal only awards a 12% bonus and Sentry's Call can only muster a 10% increase to headshot damage. Hunter's Faith can give you a 20% increase to headshot damage, but both of these bonuses require three pieces of their respective gear sets. After looking through the comparisons, choosing your muzzle mod will come down to either critical hit damage or headshot damage. If you are a player that leans towards PvP, choose the critical hit damage, as you will usually be standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with other agents and will want the damage spikes when in combat to ensure you win your one-on-one -on -one engagements. In addition, consistently nailing headshots on rapidly moving agents is quite difficult in comparison to landing body shots. If you are a player that emphasizes PvE or runs a heavy skill power or healer build in PvP, lean towards the headshot damage as you probably won't have all of your weapon talents unlocked and will want to build on the 75% headshot damage multipliers native to assault rifles. So this is what we want to try for in our assault rifle optimized build. For the PvP focus player, a 20.5% critical hit damage primary attribute roll along with critical hit chance and headshot damage as the minor attribute rolls. For the PvE or skill power healer build PvP player, an 18.5% headshot damage primary attribute roll along with 3% in stability and 2.5% in accuracy as minor attribute rolls to help with landing those headshots. There are seven underbarrel attachments to choose from and these include grips, hand stops, and laser pointers. Primary attribute roles include critical hit damage, accuracy, stability, reload speed, and optimal range. Critical hit chance and headshot damage do not roll on these attachments. I would instantly look elsewhere past the vertical grip as it rolls with a primary attribute roll of optimal range and assault rifles are already quite good for this statistic. In fact, they tend to struggle with accuracy at anything past their present optimal ranges, so adding nearly 50% more range to your rifle will simply lead to you not hitting any target consistently and thus will be a useless attribute roll. Both stability and accuracy can roll in decent percentages, but just like I pointed out in the muzzle mods portion of this video, adding these as major attribute rolls is not the most efficient way to spend this mod. This will leave us with critical hit damage and reload speed. Reload speed rolls in high percentages on the hand stop, and the only other mod where reload speed can roll in these percentages is on the magazine. In addition, reload speed only rolls for 10% on the two-piece Predator's Mark gear set bonus and 20.5% on a maxed out holster roll. If we use the ever popular LVOAC and its 2.55 second stock reload speed, this 31% potential reload speed reduction would take this AR down to 1.76 seconds, which is not a bad reduction in overall times. Just a side note, for the PvP player, this reload speed reduction does not affect your burst damage figures, and I know a lot of you look for that when modding your weapons. So, in this case, I would personally choose critical hit damage at a maximum roll of 20.5% as large sources of this damage type are not easily found in the game. Critical hit damage coupled with headshot damage could lead to damage spikes when in combat and has the potential to drop enemies extremely quickly. Now just to clarify, I am not saying that reload speed is the wrong choice, just that I would choose critical hit damage in this case. For the two minor attribute roles, I would look for stability and reload speed. If you decide to go with reload speed, look for stability and critical hit damage as your two minor roles. There are four different magazines available for your assault rifle, and just like the two previous mods, your magazine will roll with one primary attribute roll and two minor attribute rolls. Primary attribute rolls include magazine size, rate of fire, critical hit chance, and reload speed, with critical hit damage only available as a minor attribute roll. I will instantly eliminate the high velocity mag and heavy firing spring, as both of these primary attribute rolls come in two small percentages in comparison to their lower roll counterparts. In addition, rate of fire is generally high on assault rifles, so equipping the heavy firing spring for 10.3 to 12.6% higher fire rate would be a waste of our primary attribute roll. 
The high velocity magazine adds 7 to 8.5% to critical hit chance, but if we want to spec into crit, we can find higher sources on our gear, rendering this choice inefficient. This leaves us with the extended magazine and the quick release magazine left to choose from. The potential gains and reload speeds are tempting, but fall dramatically short of what the extended magazine can do for your killing potential. Taking the standard 30 round magazine for most ARs, adding 111% can take your available ammo counts to 63 before needing to reload, making the extended magazine the clear choice for our optimized assault rifle build. You are aiming for the maximum of a 111% extended magazine primary attribute roll. Minor attribute rolls of choice would be up to you, but I would prefer the small gains and critical hit chance and critical hit damage. And finally, we have arrived at the optics or scopes, and there are 19 different selections to choose from, ranging from improved iron sights all the way up to 15 times zoom scopes. For primary attribute rolls, there are three with critical hit chance, two with critical hit damage, one with headshot damage, three with accuracy, three with stability, and three with optimal range. For the scopes, always stay away from any item with the TAN designation, as their primary attribute rolls are extremely low and therefore not efficient for our optimized assault rifle build. Since the scopes roll with the exact same attributes and percentages as the muzzle mods, I will not go through each individual choice as we have already discussed how to select from these primary attribute rolls. Again, if you are a PvP focused player, you will want to choose the critical hit damage. And if you are a PvE or heavy skill power healer build PvP player, go with the headshot damage. Ideally, this is what you want to try for in both scenarios, and I have listed the names of the scopes you will want to try and craft or loot to meet your specific needs. Now that we have covered the correct weapon mods for our optimized assault rifle build for update 1.6, it's time to take a look at the weapon talents. There are currently 25 different weapon talents available for your assault rifle and it is crucial that you know which weapon talents are the most efficient for our optimized build. For the purpose of breaking down these talents into easier to handle segments, I will divide these weapon talents into one of the six categories, damage, critical, health, skill power, signature, and finally handling and RNG. Taking a quick look at how these weapon talents get divided up into the respective categories, let's now take the time to run through each category to determine which weapon talents are ideal for our optimized assault rifle build. Diving right into the damage category, and first up is Brutal, and it's flat 12% gain to headshot damage. Assault rifles already have a native 75% headshot damage multiplier, but Brutal could be useful if you are running a skill power build and won't have your first two weapon talents unlocked due to higher firearms and stamina requirements. You will need to roll Brutal into the third or free slot in order to bypass said requirements. Destructive can be useful if you are a more PvE centered player and need to drop NPC's armor as quickly as possible. At a 15% gain, Destructive is an excellent talent to have, especially for those of you agents that like taking on heroic incursions or challenge difficulty missions. Remember that Destructive is only active until the enemy's armor is broken, at which time it is deactivated and it is not really effective right now for PvP due to the lower armor requirements for update 1.6. Ferocious, like Destructive, is useful when taking on elite or named NPCs as your damage against those enemy types is increased by a flat 10%. Ferocious does not apply to veteran or standard level NPCs or against enemy agents. Prepared is available to roll as a weapon talent for assault rifles, but only activates once you are more than 30 meters from your target. Most assault rifles are past their optimal ranges at 30 meters and become wildly inaccurate and do minimal damage at these extreme distances. Only the FALs and G36s exceed the 30 meter optimal range distance, both coming in at just 32 meters. Responsive gives you a 10% weapon damage increase against all enemy types including agents for being within 10 meters of your target and is extremely useful for PvP. You will need to evaluate your playstyle and determine if responsive suits your needs for high level PvE work as staying far away from your targets and pop firing will render responsive useless. This brings us to the final damage talent and Unforgiving is extremely useful for PvP as if you are in a gunfight and face taking your opponent you will undoubtedly be taking large amounts of damage which will in turn activate the Unforgiving talent. Once you have taken enough damage to enter your third and final health bar, the 25% boost to weapon damage will activate and this is the single greatest weapon damage gain in the game. 
So this is how I would break down the damage category. For PvE, with an emphasis on taking on elite level NPCs, I would focus in on Brutal, as on challenge difficulty missions, the NPCs tend to take cover and expose their heads, making Brutal a perfect weapon talent. Destructive is attractive, but our native assault rifle talent of enemy armor damage can exceed the gains we can get from Destructive, and I would only look towards this weapon talent if you are going for a maximum enemy armor damage build. Ferocious would be the optional weapon talent for PvE, as it is situational to what difficulty level missions you are attempting. For tackling challenge difficulty, which is populated by mostly elite enemies, Ferocious can be an excellent talent, especially if you are attempting these missions solo. However, you can roll your gear pieces for damage versus elites for up to 11% on the mask and 15% on the knee pads. I would only look to Ferocious if you are going for a maximum damage versus elites or boss farming build. For PvP, go damage heavy and look towards responsive and unforgiving. Brutal can be good, but only if you can consistently land headshots on rapidly moving players that are constantly taking cover and combat rolling. Destructive gives you a net gain of only a few hundred more hit points of damage in PvP and is largely considered broken and unnecessary for PvP in Update 1.6. Ferocious and Prepared should be avoided for our optimized assault rifle build for PvP. Next up is the critical category, and these four weapon talents are all tied to crit in some way. Adept increases your critical hit chance by 7.5% for using a skill, and as far as I know, you can stack up to 15% for using both skills at once. If you've chosen to go with a heavy crit build for your assault rifle, Adept could be a decent weapon talent to consider. Deadly increases your critical hit damage by a flat 15% with no qualifiers, and once again, if you have chosen to spec heavily into crits, this could be a good choice. Remember that large amounts of critical hit damage are hard to find in Update 1.6, and a 15% gain should not be overlooked. Fierce increases your critical hit chance by 5% for using a weapon with this talent, but this is such a small crit gain in exchange for one of our valuable weapon talent slots. This brings us to Vicious, which can give us a 10% critical hit chance boost, but only if we have more than two segments of health, and how many times while we are in combat do we stay above the two health bar mark. This is how I would break down the critical category. For both PvE and PvP, the only two crit talents we should consider for our optimized assault rifle build are Adept and Deadly. However, you need to understand that both of these crit talents are extremely situational and should only be considered for a highly specialized crit-based build. Health and the ability to heal your character are at the heart of the meta change for 1.6 due to the armor and damage mitigation changes, and these three health-based weapon talents should be considered for sustained combat effectiveness. Predatory gives you a sustained health gain of 35%, spread over 20 seconds, and is effective for both PvE and PvP. Self-Preserved can give you nice health gains, but only for 3% of the damage dealt for a critical hit, and that is the caveat of this weapon talent. Since critical hits are based on chance and not guaranteed, this talent has potential but is tied to RNG and therefore is not an efficient use of our valuable weapon talent slot. Sustained, like Predatory, is based on you killing the target and awards you nothing if you don't land the killing blow. The potential 6% gain is quite small and can be surpassed by gear set bonuses like the two-piece Nomad which awards 15% health on kill. Health on kill can be rolled for 5% on the mask, body armor, and gloves, but this is generally not a smart decision for your major gear attribute. More on that in the next section of this video concerning gear set optimization. So if I had to choose from these three health-based weapon talents for both PvE and PvP, the smart choice for our optimized assault rifle build would be predatory, as the 35% health gain is consistent and not tied to RNG. However, I would not advocate any of these health-based weapon talents over some of the damage and skill power weapon talents. I am just stating which I would prefer if I was not allowed a weapon talent recalibration. Next up is the skill power category, and since the soft cap for skill power was raised up to 450,000 for update 1.6, having a good mixture of skill power and firearms is necessary for an optimized build. The next five weapon talents are tied to skill power, and we begin with Capable. And I know you could group this talent under the Handling category, but since it only procs when you activate a skill, I decided to list it in the Skill Power category. Reducing spread and recoil by 25% for 15 seconds just for using a skill could lead to some interesting results for longer distance firefights. 
However, in general, with a little pop firing and recoil compensation, we can manage assault rifles even without this weapon talent. In addition, if you are having problems handling a high fire rate AR like an M4, try equipping two pieces of Striker's battle gear for a 20% boost to stability. Competent grants us a 10% weapon damage bonus for 15 seconds after using a skill, and this weapon talent is extremely good for both PvE and PvP. Determined does give us a nice gain to skill cooldown timers and could pair well with a high electronics build. Focused is a weapon talent specific to assault rifles and grants the user 10% additional damage if no skills are on cooldown. However, we are constantly using self-heal and other skills like pulse, turret, and smart cover, and therefore this talent will never have a chance to activate. And finally, Talented does give us 15% more skill power for 20 seconds after killing a target and like Determined, could pair well with a high electronics skill power build. Since we are not trying for a high electronics build in this video and more focusing on a balanced and optimized assault rifle build, I would look towards competent for both PvE and PvP in the skill power category. The 10% base weapon damage buff just for activating a skill is too powerful a gain to overlook. Determined and Talented are not bad if you are going for maximum skill haste and skill power numbers that are through the roof. Both capable and focused should be avoided in this weapon talent category. Signature resource gains are usually avoided as weapon talents due to the fact that they are extremely situational and short-lived. With that being said, let's take a look at these three weapon talents that are all tied to signature skills. First up is Commanding, which relies on you constantly getting skills while your signature skill is active to extend its duration by 20%. However, burning down agents takes longer than 20% of your signature skill timer, and therefore this weapon talent is counterproductive. It is possible to have more value in PvE, but would require large hordes of unarmored NPCs in order to keep this weapon talent active. Dominant reduces skill cooldowns by 10% for getting kills while your signature skill is active, and if you are proficient at downing enemies while your ultimate is active, could lead to you coming out of its status effect with both of your skills fully charged. Skilled nets you 5% signature skill resource gains for killing enemies with a headshot, and of all of these resource gain skills, this would be the only one I would consider as a possible weapon talent. So for both PvE and PvP, I would pass on all three of these weapon talents, but would consider skilled if I had no other choice as part of a specialized Alpha Bridge PvE build. The final weapon talent category is Handling and RNG, and includes the final four weapon talents from our Assault Rifle list. Accurate increases your accuracy by 25% and can reduce full automatic bloom to more tightly group bullet spread. However, you can achieve the same effect by pop firing your assault rifle and allowing the reticle to settle and re-tighten back to normal. Intense could lead to some interesting results, especially when equipped on an MDR, allowing the native MDR talent of Distracted to proc. However, equipping Intense does not guarantee that 25% of your bullets will set enemies on fire. It simply runs the RNG on every round, and each round has that 1 in 4 chance of igniting your target. Meticulous, like Intense, also runs through the RNG system, and when it does work, can be useful. However, I am not a big fan of RNG weapon talents and would much prefer a constant damage boost. Swift can be useful as it reduces your weapon's reload speeds by a flat 25% with no qualifiers. However, assault rifles already reload fairly quickly with normal reload times falling in between 1.9 and 2.6 seconds, and Swift would be much more valuable on a belt-fed LMG. Looking back at this final weapon talent category, the only one you may want to consider for a specialized MDR build would be Intense. For our optimized assault rifle build, I would pass on all of these weapon talents. So this is what weapon talents you should aim for in both PvE and PvP. For a three weapon talent build capable of tackling most PvE work, look for Brutal, Predatory, and Competent. This build will give you some battlefield sustainability, 10% damage boost for activating a skill, and 12% headshot damage should an enemy attach to cover and expose their heads. Destructive and Ferocious can be interchangeable, especially if you are going for a heavy armor destruction build or for an elite boss farming build. Since I received several requests to include a layout for a specialized PvE MDR build, using a 3 weapon talent build and built around headshots and the sentries call gear set, I would recommend going with Brutal, Competent, and Distracted. Go full firearms and stay back off the front lines just a bit while your teammates push forwards while you mark targets and continually aim for the head. 
Intense could be a useful talent to experiment with, and focused could be helpful if you were running with a squad that uses skills regularly, allowing you never to use yours. Make sure they are running with fire turrets to maximize the effects of the distracted MDR talent. For a 3 weapon talent PvP build, go full damage with responsive, unforgiving, and competent. If you prefer to PvP from a safer distance, you could look to replace responsive with brutal, but only if your aim is extremely good. For a 4 weapon talent PvE build built on the Alpha Bridge gear set, look to equip responsive, predatory, competent, and brutal. Destructive and Ferocious can be mixed into your taste, and remember with Alpha Bridge, you will not need to meet firearms, stamina, or electronics requirements to unlock all four weapon talents. If you are looking to attempt challenge difficulty missions solo, you may also want to consider Skilled to build up your signature resource gains quickly. For a four weapon talent PvE MDR build built on the Alpha Bridge gear set, go with Brutal, Competent, Distracted, and Predatory. Destructive or Ferocious can be mixed into your taste. For a 4 weapon talent PvP build built on the Alpha Bridge gear set, look for Responsive, Unforgiving, Competent, and Brutal. Predatory can be mixed in to your taste. This weapon talent's build guide is in no way set in stone, but these recommendations will simplify your weapon talent selections for both PvE and PvP. Gear optimization is crucial to maximizing the potential of your assault rifle build for update 1.6 and this guide will take you through each gear piece line by line starting off with the body armor. Body armor will roll natively with armor ranging from 1704 up to 2003 and these are the single biggest armor rolls in the game for gear. Gear pieces will come standard with all three main stats, firearm, stamina, and electronics, and one of these will roll as your high main stat, ranging from 1,114 up to 1,272, with the other two coming in standardized at 205. In addition, your body armor will come with two random major attributes and one minor attribute. The six major attributes available for the body armor include enemy armor damage, all resistance, health, health on kill, exotic damage resilience, and skill haste. To effectively know which major attributes are best for our optimized assault rifle build, let's take a look at each of these attributes to evaluate their efficiency and effectiveness starting off with enemy armor damage. Enemy armor damage can roll on the body armor ranging from 5 to 6%, and in update 1.5 I would have said this was a good attribute to try for. However, in update 1.6 armor levels have been reduced, therefore placing much less emphasis on enemy armor damage. In comparison to your assault rifle, which can roll with enemy armor damage natively from 17.5 up to 24%, the 5 to 6% gain is a major attribute is not an efficient use of one of our major attribute roles. In addition, for PvP, enemy armor damage is all but useless, literally adding a few hundred more points of damage to your target until their armor is broken. All in all, enemy armor damage is not a bad major attribute role, but it is not the best choice for our build. All resistance was added in update 1.6 as a major attribute roll and does not roll in a range, instead it comes as a flat 4% resistance to all status effects. This is by far the worst possible major attribute roll for your gear as it rolls in such low amounts and in comparison to what you can get on your knee pads, which is anywhere from 27 to 33% resistance percentages, you can see just how inefficient this new resistance is. Health rolls on your body armor ranging from 14,184 up to a perfect roll of 16,674 and this is an extremely wise and efficient use of one of your major attribute rolls due to the modified conversion factors for health to stamina in update 1.6. In update 1.5, the health to stamina conversion was 30 to 1, meaning that for every 30 points of health you gain the equivalent of 1 point in stamina. However, in update 1.6, that conversion has been changed to 15 to 1, meaning that health rolls are now twice as potent as they were in 1.5. For example, if you roll your major attribute for a maximum health roll of 16,674 divided by 15 equals a potential gain to stamina of 1,112, making health the new armor for 1.6. For our optimized assault rifle 1.6 build, specking into firearms and electronics and then rolling health onto our gear pieces is much more efficient than rolling our gear pieces for stamina. Health on kill can roll on your body armor from 4 to 5% and while not great, it is not the worst major attribute roll as sources of sustainability are at a premium in 1.6. 
Since the skill power cap has been greatly increased, the strength of your healing skills has been reduced, especially if you are more specced into firearms and DPS. If you choose to roll away health on kill, a nice alternative is to equip two pieces of Nomad gear for the 15% health on kill gear bonus. Exotic Damage Resilience returns from Update 1.5 and in the past I would have advised you to instantly roll away this attribute as most players can avoid grenades by simply combat rolling. However, times have changed and in Update 1.6, especially in this one-shot Seeker Mind Chain Reaction meta, having some Exotic Damage Resilience on your gear is vital for PvP. And I think we can all agree, there is nothing more irritating than constantly being set on fire or blown to bits by an airburst. Skill Haste can roll on your body armor ranging from 7 to 9% and overall is not a bad major attribute to have. Since we are not going for a skill power assault rifle build, we will need whatever help we can find with skill cooldowns and at a potential 9% gain, Skill Haste should not be overlooked. If you choose not to have Skill Haste on your body armor, a possible alternative is to equip two pieces of Tactician's Authority for the Skill Haste bonus. Minor attribute bonuses have remained unchanged from update 1.5 with both kill XP and ammo capacity returning unchanged. Ammo capacity is the ideal choice, as a potential 56% more ammo capacity is crucial for extended PvE, underground, or dark zone excursions. So here is what we will look to get for our optimized assault rifle build for the body armor. Health is a 100% requirement for our build as you simply cannot choose any other major attribute over health. After that, it will come down to your personal preference. For the PvE focused player, look for enemy armor damage, health on kill, and skill haste. For the PvP focused player, look for exotic damage resilience, health on kill, and skill haste. For both of these builds, ammo capacity is the clear choice for your minor attribute. The mask can roll with native armor ranging from 852 up to a perfect roll of 1001 and like your body armor comes with one high main stat roll and two low fixed rolls. For the mask, you will have one major attribute, one minor attribute, and health cannot be rolled onto the mask. This allows us more variety when choosing a major attribute as we are not required to spend it on health. Major attributes include critical hit chance, enemy armor damage, all resistance, health on kill, exotic damage resilience, and skill power. In addition, the mask offers a wide variety of minor attributes including damage versus elites, burn resistance, disorient resistance, blind death resistance, and kill XP. I covered most of these major attributes when discussing proper selection for the body armor, so I will not be going through these line by line, but I did want to touch on critical hit chance and skill power. Critical hit chance rolls on the mask in horribly low amounts and this would be a waste of our one major attribute roll. In addition, if you are going for a high crit assault rifle build, there are many more and much higher percentage gains of critical hit chance to be found on your weapon mods and through skills like pulse. Skill power rolls on the mask ranging from 8532 up to 10,030 and still uses the standard conversion method of 30 points of skill power equals 1 point in electronics. At a maximum roll of 10,030, this would equal roughly 334 points worth of electronics and this is not a bad game for a skill power focus build. The resistance percentages remain unchanged from update 1.5 as minor attributes, but now with a new resistance mechanic. Now, resistances no longer have a percentage chance to block the incoming status effect, but rather they will reduce the time and damage from set effect for the percentage amount. For instance, if you have burn resistance rolled onto your mask and are set on fire, how long you are on fire will be reduced by 17% and how much damage the fire does will also be reduced by 17%. Kill XP rolls from 12 to 14% and this is nearly half of what you can get on the body armor and overall is not an ideal choice for our optimized assault rifle build. Damage versus elites can be rolled as high as 11%, and for an in-game PvE focus player, this flat 11% damage gain against elites is extremely useful. Ideally, for a PvE focus player, I would say to concentrate on enemy armor damage, skill power, and health on kill. Large amounts of enemy armor damage and damage versus elites will turn you into an in-game juggernaut, but be careful, as this is a build specifically meant for max level missions and will not function nearly as well in PvP or the DZ. If you are a PvP focused player, look towards health on kill, exotic damage resilience, and skill power. For minor attributes, if you are more focused on PvE, try for damage versus elites, as the flat 11% gain is too strong to overlook. 
If your focus is PvP, always look for more burn resistance as your minor attribute. You can only have one major attribute along with three minor attributes on your knee pads and since I have already covered all of these attributes in the previous body armor and mask discussions, I will quickly move through these six major attributes. Exotic damage resilience rolls on the knee pads in lower percentages than the body armor and mask and at just 6.5 to 8% should not be selected as your one major attribute. All resistance rolls at just 3% and at these absurdly low percentages should not be in consideration as your major attribute. Health can roll on the knee pads in the same amounts as on the body armor and at a roughly 1,112 point gain to stamina, health is simply a major attribute you can't ignore. Skill power can roll on your knee pads ranging from 11,347 up to a perfect roll of 13,339 and represents roughly a 445 point gain to electronics. And finally, critical hit damage can roll ranging from 7 to 9% on your knee pads and should only be considered if you are going for a full crit focused build. Minor attributes include damage versus elite and resistances including shock, burn, disorient, blind death, disrupt, and bleed. In addition, kill XP rolls in its highest gear piece percentages on your knee pads ranging from 46 to 56%. All in all, for a PvE-focused build, focus on health, skill power, or critical hit damage, keeping in mind that health is the most important. For minor attributes, ideally you should try for damage versus elites, burn resistance, and bleed resistance. For the PvP-minded player, focus on health, critical hit damage, or skill power. For minor attributes, burn resistance is best. Your backpack can roll with native armor ranging from 1135 up to 1334 and high and low main stat rolls the same as the previously mentioned three gear pieces. There are only four major attributes that can roll on the backpack including critical hit damage, health, skill power and the newly added attribute weapon stability. For the minor attributes, burn, disrupt and bleed resistances are available as well as ammo capacity. I would instantly write off weapon stability for our optimized assault rifle build as we can control recoil through a little feathering of the trigger or pop firing. Health rolls on the backpack ranging from 11,347 up to 13,339 and at its highest roll it represents roughly an 889 point gain to stamina. Critical hit damage does roll in decent amounts and at a 9% gain could help those of you who are building a highly specialized crit centered assault rifle build. And finally, skill power is available in rolls ranging from 11,347 up to 13,339 and at its highest roll percentage would represent a 445 point gain to skill power. For the purpose of our assault rifle build, I am going to instantly remove skill power and weapon stability, leaving us with just critical hit damage and health. Since the health rolls in smaller amounts on your backpack than say the body armor or knee pads, I might lean towards the critical hit damage. However, choosing the additional health is not a bad option. For the minor attributes, you can't go wrong with more burn resistance or ammo capacity and honestly, I am fine with either one. The gloves are unique in that they roll with three major attributes and no minor attributes and as before, will roll with one high main stat roll two fixed low main stat rolls and native armor ranging from 852 up to 1001. 11 major attributes are available including additional assault rifle, SMG, shotgun, LMG, pistol and marksman rifle damage along with critical hit chance, critical hit damage, enemy armor damage, health on kill and skill haste. For our optimized assault rifle build, the potential 17% gain in critical hit damage is simply too high a bonus to overlook. Additional assault rifle damage is a no-brainer and will eliminate the need for us to discuss any other damage types. This leaves us with critical hit chance, enemy armor damage, health on kill, and skill haste. And I would try for the extra enemy armor damage for PvE or the critical hit chance for PvP. This brings us to the final piece of gear which is the holster and it can roll with native armor from 852 up to a perfect roll of 1001. In addition, the holster is unique in that it comes with all three main stats, firearms, stamina and electronics, all rolled between 1114 to 1272. There are just a few major attribute selections including critical hit chance, health, skill haste and weapon reload speed and no minor attributes available. Of the four major attributes available for the holster, the only one I would immediately eliminate for our optimized assault rifle build is weapon reload speed. 
Assault rifles reload fairly quickly, and this would be a waste of our one major attribute roll. Critical hit chance is not a bad option, but at only 3-4% to and the fact that critical hit chance sources are readily available, I would not rule this attribute out, but there are better options. Health is always a great option when available on your gear, and at the 7092 to 8337 rolls equates to roughly 556 points worth of stamina, and you will need extra health and stamina for prolonged life while in combat. Skill Haste does roll on the holster, but in lower percentages than both the body armor and gloves, and while it is not a bad choice, the 6-7% to percentage rolls are a bit low. All in all, I would try for a holster above 1,200 in all three main stats and with as high a health roll as possible. Gear mods are an extremely useful resource for filling in small gaps in your build, and for our optimized assault rifle build, they will come in handy. Your gear can hold a total of five gear mods broken out across your gear in the following slots. Two on the body armor, one on the mask, one on the knee pads, and one on your backpack. Gear mods can roll with one main stat bonus, firearms, stamina, or electronics, ranging from 228 up to 267, and one attribute from the following and in the ranges listed below. Based on where your assault rifle build is at this point, I would instantly eliminate critical hit chance, exotic damage resilience, and signature resource gain as they roll in extremely small amounts. This leaves us with health, skill haste, and skill power. At maximum roll, the 3,335 health roll translates into 222 points worth of stamina, which can be useful in adding a little extra toughness to your character. Skill haste, for the reasons I pointed out in the gear optimization section, is going to be very important in update 1.6, especially if you are not running a skill power build. And finally, skill power, when at maximum roll, translates into 111 points of electronics, which is a rather small gain. Once again, I would be looking towards the extra health and skill haste on all of my gear mods. Four performance mod slots are available across your gear pieces in the following. Two on the backpack, one on the knee pads, and one on the holster, and can vary among 22 different skills listed here. Based on your build, there are many good selections to choose from, but for our specific build, I would choose the first aid self-heal at a maximum roll of 6%. Since the potency of healing skills is directly dependent on your skill power, being able to equip four of these 6% first aid self-heal mods to boost your healing abilities by 24% is simply a performance mod you can't go without. Now that we've been through proper weapon mods, weapon talents, and gear optimization, it's time to dive into which assault rifles are best for both PvE and PvP. Luckily for you, I created a best-in-class assault rifle video and posted it to my channel back in update 1.5, link in the description below, and it is still somewhat relevant even now in update 1.6. However, there have been several changes to the meta since I uploaded that video and it has shuffled up the rankings just a bit. First up is the ever-popular M4 family of rifles, which include the Liberator, Lightweight, LVOAC, Standard, and Police variants, and all of these ARs will handle and fire the same, so it will come down to base damage rolls and weapon talents to help you decide which of these to equip. In Update 1.5, the M4s were extremely popular and were hands down the best assault rifle for both PvE and PvP. Recognizing this trend, the devs did sneak in an unpublished 4% base damage nerf to the M4s across the board, bringing them down closer to the rest of the assault rifles in an attempt to encourage variety. For those of you agents that prefer to equip a full auto assault rifle, they are still the best in the game, but have been brought down just a bit so that the G36s are much closer than they were in the past. In update 1.5, the FAMAS, now known as the exotic bullfrog assault rifle, was hands down the weakest AR in the game due to its low base damage model. Agents did like the FAMAS, but not as their primary weapon, instead pairing it with an M4 Alpha Bridge build to exploit the uncomplicated 15% base damage increase. However, in update 1.6, that exploit has been removed from the game and the FAMAS has now been renamed to the bullfrog. In addition, the Bullfrog received an 11.7% base damage increase, placing it mid-pack among the assault rifle classification. Not enough, but the buff was seriously needed for this AR. The third and most drastic change to the assault rifle meta was to the exotic MDR, which received a massive 65% base damage increase. 
This buff has taken the MDR from laughable and gimmicky to best in class as it is now the king for both burst and sustained damage among ARs and should be the weapon you look to loot in update 1.6. In addition, the unique MDR talent of Distracted has been increased to 18% more damage against targets with status effects. This does not apply to Sentry's Call Marks, but for enemies that have been shocked, blinded, gassed, or on fire. For those of you that do not like having a semi-automatic AR, look for that perfect M4, as they are still best among full auto assault rifles. The final segment of our optimized assault rifle build is knowing how to compute base damage rolls on your weaponry to ensure you always have the maximum damage for whatever assault rifle you equip. You will want to continually check your equipped weapons against newer looted or crafted ARs to make sure you are using the best weaponry available and computing base damage rolls can be a bit overwhelming. Luckily for you, I posted a base damage rolls calculations tutorial to my channel, link in the description below, that will walk you through the step-by-step -step process on how to compute these rolls. Make sure to check out both of those videos as they can answer any questions you have on which assault rifle to equip and how to compute the damage rolls on your weaponry. Well, there you go agents, every last piece of information you could possibly want or need on how best to assemble an optimized assault rifle build in update 1.6, broken down piece by piece. And as always, I would love to hear your thoughts on my assault rifle best in slot full optimization guide for update 1.6. Feel free to ask me about a damage roll or recommendation for any assault rifle in the comments section below. In addition, if you could take the time to rate the video with a huge thumbs up, it would be greatly appreciated. If you want some more Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and my division content in your life, make sure to pound that sub button and follow me on Twitter at Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer. If you have questions about any weapon in the division, look no further than my comprehensive weapon review playlist to answer any and all of your questions. And remember for my channel, likes, comments, subs are loved. Until my next The Division video, this has been Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer saying peace out.